three times and lost five. And as we jump on into the knife round, your stats kind of tell a story suggesting that both sides have their reasons to be able to pick up this victory. VP, you know, arguably not map does to not their strongest map and we are going to see VP cl close but no cigar and to pick that one up as look you can see Neo was just one stab away as well picked up three and they are going to have the choice of size well we need to compare the fact that Virtus Pro have been playing some teams that are relatively unknown like GG well played dot pro uh, in game show season number two uh, but then you have TSM where they beat NIP in the face it or uh, the finals of face it 21 18 and um, then they beat them again 16-14 in the winner bracket final at PGL. They beat Dinatos 16-14 in Frag Bites. They beat Envious 26-23 in the face of groups. Uh, they played Dutch 2 25 times in 2015 and have won 18 times and lost 7. So TSM, they, they have the, the, the stats to prove it, but can they perform when it matters? Time to find out. Both teams ready to go. So we're going to be jumping into this one. It looks like VP opted to take the T side to kick this one off as KGMB is just going to be running straight up mid, gathering some intel. He saw one cross towards those long doors area, but does he know that there's a definitely a definitive stack for the T side? Well, Virtus Pro playing this one very slow. They do have four flashes and two smokes to work with while letting Neo kind of roam around and be the powerhouse that he can be. In the meantime, now they're all grouped up towards Longhouse. They're going to push out with the help of the flash. When they do spot out Kerrigan, they force him back. But with now these two spokes and two flashes, how are they going to execute onto the site? Oh, KGB is actually behind them. He's stuck by Neo. I think they're aware. They can tell that they've heard, they must have heard some footsteps. There's two people stacked up on it. KGB deleted by Snacks. And now, Neo is the man to watch. He has crawled through the smoke, and I don't think they're anticipating. Didn't hit the initial shot, though, and that's actually going to be a bit of a problem for him. Taz, low on health, but he's pushing on towards the site. Well, the smokes do miss, but Taz does get in towards the site, does catch off the man, watching towards uh, Kawak, picks up the kill on the Zipniks. And now they will have the site, they will have the edge situation. Kerrigan trying to stall for time, but Taz picks up another. That's two so far in the round for him. And now it's on the hands of Device and Dupree. Device on one HP, and this is going to be a tough retake for them. Oh, nigh impossible now. 11 points of health between them, and they're like, well, that's not going to go too well. Keep hold of the Kevlar and backing away from that one. Probably the best decision. And they are going to see VP pick that one up. Just one casualty. It actually felt like TSM had a good read. They knew VP were going to be hitting that ace site. They were expecting a, a large presence long, but through use of smokes and a good push from Taz and that double frag is going to bring that round home. Well, one thing I liked out of that too was that KGB, he did go for the push middle and did flank around them towards long. We'll get back to that point in just a few seconds while we do see him pushing out to free looking for the kill. Which he can't connect device. We'll get one. A little quickly be shut down right after that. But he went for the push middle, KGB. He got the information. But what I loved about it was that Neo, he heard it, played it cool, didn't try to go for the challenge where he could have possibly lost out in the 1v1. Instead, he tells his team, all right, the guy's pushing behind you, and he goes catwalk to cause a distraction. So from that, they're able to pincer and move on to the A side. They pick up Zitniks, like you saw, just sitting, sitting behind the boxes looking towards catwalk, and it was an easy take. So for this pro, they pick up the pistol round, and now uh, buy up a little bit, a couple of, or actually one AK picked up for snacks. They're looking for round number two on the board. Yeah, they're looking to be just put, doing, going Ooh. for a brute force versus plow on towards that B site. It looks like Dupree's going to be first on the scene, though, as things do take a little bit of a slow motion pace. I tell a lie, here they come, and he's got the CZ. They've done a big chunk of damage to the VP side. His device connects with the scout as well. And actually, DSM's buy is not looking too shabby here. They have the armored 5.7s, and they're going to be in a position for a retake. One scout, two pistols up against the SMGs and AK of VP. Oh, he's taking a big chunk of snacks. They can get this retake here. Those jumping shots are so deadly. And it looks like TSM might actually go for the save, but they have KGB flanking it. around. Zipnix looking to push through upper dark. Bialy, though, going to be waiting. And he'll have two men to meet up against. But he's not sitting on that much HP. There's no kits, so I'm assuming they're just waiting for some exit kills. Not really going to commit to this at all. And Bialy, I, I would imagine he's going to push through tunnels, and he should fall from this one. Hmm. But TSM playing it smart. Trying to get a couple of kills where they can. A couple, uh, couple of guns if they can pick him up. And Snacks, he's going to lose his AK no matter what. Yeah, and I mean, and Taz is gonna die from this too. Like, they they, they didn't win the Ikara, even though they bought up a couple of scouts, but they forced them to lose almost every single gun, and Taz is just barely gonna oh. escape with the AK. But they made it expensive for Virtus Pro, and considering Virtus Pro, what the Molotov second round onto onto uh, Plat, that was really unexpected. But they really want to cover all their corners and have a clean round. Unfortunately, TSM with the scouts is able to make that not happen. Yeah, still, money isn't going to be as crazily affected as you may expect. We are still going to be seeing the AKs uh, and the full armor board. Uh, plenty of nades as well, even another molly for Pasha. As we're going to be jumping into our third round. And looks like already we're going to see blood drawn by Bialy. This is going to be a big spread of damage as we're going to see two frags exchanged on either side of things. That's actually favoring in favor of DSM. As now Carrigan, just a P250 to his name, is going to be deleted as the nade and AK combined completely removes his health bar. And now... Just Device and Dupree left to kind of clutch at straws and see if they can pull something together. Well, they've got Device watching the cross. 
They will have one smoke to actually block him off, but it doesn't cover the entirety of this. He's going to get a clean shot off. He misses, unfortunately, onto uh, Taz, who is crossing. And Nina does capitalize, picking up the kill into Dupree. And now Device in a one-on-three situation. It's going to be tough. He can possibly pull it off, but he doesn't have a kit. He's going to have to go extra fast. And Neo will shut him down quickly. Virtus Pro pick up the first three rounds, as we expected. Not as cleanly as uh, you know they might have hoped for, but they get them nonetheless. Just about, and we are going to be seeing the Glass Cannon Cajun B pick up that AWP or AWP. Oh, if I could have rhymed there. Cajun B with the AWP. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> they are going to be buying up. Majority as they can. They are scraping stuff together. A couple of fam ass, no head armor for three of them, or, well, no armor in general for Cajun B. But either way, they're going to be going to their, do their best to bring this fourth round home. Oh, we're just going for a quick push potentially over towards the B site. TSM showing us. Uh, uh, a sign of force towards long. They send three men there every time just to hold that area off, then they can rotate people back as Zipnix has gone back towards uh, towards CT spawn and KGB just back and carrying up. But Virtus Pro still taking the time. Let's see, they do have a lot of smokes to work with, so they could go mid to be pushed if they wanted to. They still have Pasha waiting to pincer in with Dupree and Device waiting. With a minute 10 to go on the clock, they're not really in too much of a hurry, but now being flashed out, Towns going to be the first one. Will he spot them on top of box? Zitnix. I believe he did get some information knowing that they are crossing through and they're gonna have to reinforce this quickly. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of pressure applied to device here as he's gonna be holding on towards the site. Here come the flashes, here come the footsteps, but he's actually gonna draw two. The Dupree gets one as well, and VP are starting to crumble. One man left and there's five to find, and he's not gonna get anything as Dupree was the only casualty in that round. First round on the board for TSM, and that's gonna put them in a good situation for the next. That flashbang though, that was thrown into sight. It completely blinded out device, and yet he was able to stay alive long enough to stop them from pushing in. Like that, that two-man push, I think Pasha got shut down trying to come through tunnels to really apply the pressure from another angle. But when it comes down to it, that was just pure aim. And Device really stepping up for his team as well as Dupree to shut down that push. Ooh, and they finally, secure buy. Themselves. Yeah, they finally secure themselves the first round on the board. And Virtus Pro, they're, they're not done. They, they just want to keep hammering these rounds in, keep buying up, keep making it expensive for TSM. Uh, fortunately, last round, though, I think they only got one kill, so not really enough. Yeah, and I mean, you got the armored P250, the armored Tech 9, and scraping together two Galils with the one AK. It's not oh, ideal, but nice. oh, device. Little does he know there is a swarm of enemies just on the other side of those doors. Sipnix readies his Molotov. He's going to finally catch a glimpse of one, but that's not going to give him all the information he needs. As it's actually going to be Taz who shows his head. Takes a decent chunk out of device, but that bomb's still caught in middle. I don't know if, if he caught a glimpse of the bomb carrier, though. I'm not sure either. But Virtus Pro, in the meantime, now, with the smokes coming in, they're looking to push out, and they will smoke off CT yet again, smoke off uh, the area towards windows so they can't be actually shot from there, but they have to peek straight through it, and they're going to push back into sight. They have, you know, they have the guns to do it. Device, though, going to be looking to shut down this door. Oh, that's beautiful. He steps on his own Molotov, only takes one, though. That is not a good trade. Bialy onto Dupree. That's going to open up the B site wide open, as it's going to be down to Zipnix to draw blood. Takes Taz down from middle, and that's going to enable his teammates to rotate from the A site. It's a 3v3. Armor does favor, sorry, armor and health bomb. does favor TSM, but why is that bomb it's not that, down? It's not inside B yet. <gasps> the smoke had to get through. Out. Oh my god, I saw, I saw it on one side of the wall. I must have misread it. But now the bomb's going down. All right, here we go. Oh, the Molotov going to catch Bialy completely off guard. He will fall from this. Now Pasha and Neo, the last two alive as TSM started to push in. Neo, the last man now. He will take two, but he can get the last, and Kerrigan does close things out. And that will get TSM another round again. Not as clean as uh, as they would have hoped, but they still get the round nonetheless. Virtus Pro, they did invest a lot of money into that round uh, as well, buying up well. One AK, two Galils, a Tech 9, and a P250. And they potentially have the money to buy again if they want to keep this pressure on. Yeah, that's a big if. I mean, the money does does kind of maybe hint towards the VP eco, especially after not succeeding in that round. But they are going to go for it. We're going to be seeing a Scout, a Galil, an Armor Tech 9, and the double AK. So they are just scraping together their funds. And not going to be successful in this round. In their defense, they did get very, very close to that round victory with what they bought prior. Let's mm. see if they can do one better now. Pasha holding middle. It's going to be Orp B Scout. I know who I'd favor, but not going to see the shot connect as KGB is going to back away and cross. He was trying to read into TSM, I, I believe, because he wasn't even watching the cross. Like, he didn't even try to see how many people went over towards that B side, and Neo you know, just going to walk out middle without being spotted. Whoa. I'll eventually take quite a bit of damage from Device. The Virtus Pro just don't seem to have an answer just yet. Maybe it is they need to save up and go for a full-out buy, because you're seeing they're missing a lot of utility, they're missing a lot of nades, a lot of flashes, a lot of smokes that they could use to execute onto these these sites. But now with Neo on 16 HP, sac uh, Snacks on 51. The two AKs it's... have got the least amount of health. That is not how you want to position it. It's not. And they have to look for an opening. And when you have Zipnix just waiting inside a site, it's going to be tough. But Device does secure the first. Does cut off Neo from that Virtus Pro squad. And it looks like they want to go for an execute towards A. Like, they do have a f two flashes and a smoke, so they could smoke something off. Maybe drop towards CT if they wanted to. 
With 40 seconds to go and TSM getting the information knowing they're on catwalk, this is going to be difficult. Zipnix is so oh, ready. Flashes. His flashes are coming out. He's going to be white as a snowy day, but he's going to find one. Look for the second as well. Cajun B is going to respond with the AWP as well. So now just two members of VP remain. And God, that is another faulty push from the Vertus Pro boys. Bialy though does open up as does Taz. And that's just going to be a quick response from TSM to put them back in their place. And I think Vertus Pro are finally, dare I say it, going to... I don't want to they're say it. finally no. going to save. I was going to say, are they going to save? Uh, oh, I think they might actually. I think yeah. they're going to see a Glock train. Phew. Might have a couple of pistols. Yeah, I see a Deagle for Bialy. A couple of P250s in there. Um, but Bialy last round, he actually was solo long, where he had Kerrigan there in a 1v1. Yeah. But I believe he got smoked out, so he pushed out a little bit late. And if he went a little bit quicker, he could have caught Kerrigan off from the back, because Kerrigan just completely abandoned long A. Uh, so maybe a little bit of misplay, maybe just a little bit of a misread. And then again, they weren't fully bought up. Oh, these pistols, what was it? Three, two, three, two, three P two fifties. So for me many to say. numbers. And two deagles. <laughs> they still can put a lot of work in. I, I'm just oh. thinking about. That's a perfect angle. From <laughs> I think about luminosity and how well they use the deagles, and we could see that happening here for Virtus Pro. Bialy picks up one. Yeah, and they're going to be seeing actually two for, for VP. This is a more successful round than some of their four spies, but still, we are going to be seeing two TSM bodies Ooh. put to bed. That's another great shot from KJB. Such an effective AWP on these angles. Just holds the tight angle and has the reaction speed to follow up. That was three for him, and we're going to be seeing the fourth now on the board for TSM. Still expensive, though. Those three kills. And you look at the economy of, of TSM, and they're not really sitting too healthy. You know, they, they can... Maybe about the next night they do lose this one, but they don't have a stable economy to really fall back to if they start to slip on a couple of rounds. Reverse so Pro now fully buying up. They have quite a few Molotovs, two to work with, with Pasha and Stacks. Smokes, the flashes, the whole kit. This is going to be the test for TSM. And it's. I mean, I'm seeing a big preference from the uh, the VP boys of just this kind of slow attention to mid. It's usually two or three. Sometimes they push up and they're going to do exactly that same thing again. Well, what's rough is that Pasha hasn't really been able to afford an op in these first, what, seven, eight rounds. Like, he has been able to go head-to-head -head against Cajun B or go for any of these picks down the middle or even, like, really spotting the cross. So, you know, Versus Pro, they need to be able to afford that for him. Even though Posh is one of the offers that doesn't necessarily rely on it too much, he can use the uh, the rifles quite a bit. I was even remembering Katowice, where he had, like, more rifle kills than op kills. But look at that. Taz is going to push out towards the smoke device. Off to his left device. I think he got a little bit of damage into him, but hasn't picked up the kill. And Versus Pro, in the meantime, are pushing in towards Catwalk. Oh my god, oh. Taz walking straight towards CT spawn! He's snuck through enemy lines and he's been able to catch up one. Oh, oh it's, it's not device. device. Finally wakes up and now here comes Bialy on the offensive. No, he's looking for the kill. There's a man towards ramp. Kerrigan picks that up and they've stalled this push. The bomb is down. Zim is coming in from CT. Neil will respond. Snacks pick it up Kerrigan. Now Device and Dupree, the last two alive. They do have the M4s. They do have the potential to pull this off. They need to pick up some kills. They get Neo down. The bomb will finally get planted, but now in a 2 on 2 after plant situation. Snacks on 17 health. Pasha on 45. This is doable for TSM. Certainly is. The flash comes in, and that's two very blind terrorists. We're going to see a great positioning from Dupree. It's still a 1v1, though, and Pasha's health, a little worse for wear. He has got the advantage. He's jump shot, sitting on the plan. He's thinking about oh. it, doesn't quite connect. And now it's going to be a ring around the rosy, trying to play the clock. And Pasha levels the playing field and more as he takes down Dupree and unfazed with that one point of health. He managed to pick that round up for his team. Looks like that practice Pasha's been doing all day on oh, yeah. Dust2 is working out for him. Virtus Pro do net themselves their fourth round and tie things up. And like we were saying before, TSM not on that stable of an economy. And we see that reflected in round number nine, which is a scout MP9, a, a Famous, a 5-7 or two in there. A very shoddy buy. Again, still very possible to pull this off. Murders Pro not looking as uh, as solid as they do on other maps. But well, I feel like we're in a very limbo state currently in this game. Not, not one team really getting that solid advantage against the other. I think that's a really nice summary of it. And I think that's probably down a lot to the VP force buys that have been really chunking down TSM's economy. As you highlighted prior, still, bomb heading towards middle. No surprises there. VP definitely have their kind of their go-to. That lurk from Neo in terms of looking to catch us someone as well. But in the meantime, Device just... L Lurking with that 5-7. Well, if you take a look at the overview, you can see on the minimap, there's actually no one inside of A. Like, there's no one sitting inside of the site. Because they have Dipmix pushed up towards CT spawn to back device up if they do rush them. They have KGB backing up Kerrigan towards long A as he does finally retreat back towards car to help out. And Virtus Pro are just taking their time. They realize, guys, we need to build a stable economy. We need to get Pasha, you know, on that op potentially. We need to have clean rounds, clean, concise rounds. And by slowing things down just a little bit, that might be exactly what they need to do to pull this off. They are going to be... Once again, pushing towards that short side, at least that's what Pasha's got his eyes on. As Device with just this armor 5-7 is still 
hanging about on doors. Oh, he might get one. This is it. This is the reward he's been looking for, but the risk didn't quite pay off. Zipnix did get that trade, though, and that's important. And here come VP, and the nades do indicate just that. But Cajun B, he's got a scout. It's certainly not the orc, but he's still going to be hitting shots. That's the little jump's perfect. That's a second. He's just chunking chunk them down. His teammates are mopping up. And Zipnix coming in like it's one scout tag, one pistol shot, and the that person does fall. He's gonna oh, again. Fortunately, I think he, actually, no, he did hit that one. So now Posh on 20 health, Bialy on 12, and TSM on a save round, basically, or a forced buy, which is scouts, MP9s, 5.7s, are going to pull this off. Dupree picks up the last kill. They should be able to salvage most of those AKs. Well done by TSM to take the lead back in their hands. And they're just giving the masterclass to Vertus Pro on how to play a force buy. That was beautiful from Cajun B. He took so many tags. I think, was that three connections with the yeah. scout? That's, so that's what makes the scout so damn powerful. You see him jumping time and time again to see over that little corner where you wouldn't expect someone. Gets the tag, Zitmix comes in with some clean kills with the 5-7, and they pick up the AKs, they win the round, and TSM, that's it's got to be a big confidence booster for him. Um, Pasha? I thought I saw it. I thought I saw an SG-553. Uh, maybe a bit of fat fingers, we'll find out. Uh, that's an intentional play. Either way, Snacks is going to be the man that's... Uh, Given that one, for him, right? it was a gift. Yeah, a gift from Pasha. Well, let's maybe, see how maybe it works it's Max's birthday. As they have got, wow, they've got so super, super aggressive into long. Neo's managed to push right on up there past the Molotov. I don't know if they're aware of his position. Nades do indicate that they do, as the Molotov is going to be thrown out again. That's two Molotovs. That smoke as well. They're just raining down fire and actually going to be connecting on towards Bialy as they continue. And wow, Carrigan, he doesn't need to see them to pick up these frags. This is why it's so difficult to take long <laughs> A against TSN as they throw three men out of ASAP. You can rush out, but you're going to be completely blind. There's going to be Molotovs since TSM want to build that stable economy, buying up everything they possibly can in this round. And TSM haven't lost down a single man. Snacks on 11 health, Staz trying to push through middle. It does get the challenge onto the device, does take him down, so we'll have a potential gun if he can get to it. But luckily for them, they have the bomb. Zitnix not on that great of health, like Snacks. If he can pull off these shots, if he can kill Zitnix, this would be huge. You Caravan, Caravan's left over towards Long A, but Taz, fortunately, now falling. Oh, and I, I had hopes. I had I had hopes for Snacks in the SIG. Did, did you see a 10 health SG? 1v4? Is that what was No, said? it's just, I mean, <laughs> I, I remember back when they were buffed, it was like the AUG got this giant buff and everyone started using it. It's not like a bad gun, it's just not really cost effective when you can do yeah. the same with a, well, you can do better with an AK. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely a little bit of fat fingers out of Pasha. Well, we'll see how that's muscles affect in his them. fingers. Yeah, his money is level with his team now. Maybe he just wanted to take the investment and see if they could get anything with it, but... Not going to be too difficult for the VP boys to get back into this. When I say that though, Device is just going to be slaughtering this uh, pistol around from the Vertus Pro boys. They've just got P250s and Glocks between them and Device going to pick up two and make the call to his teammates that there's a few more going to be pushing towards middle and look at that. They're just going to be Taz, the only man really who's going to pick up a frag in this one. That's all on to Pasha. All right, so yeah, you can pretty much write this round off. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say it, you know, because I still, there's, there's always hope with the P250, but uh, most likely we can say that's going to be over and... You know, Virtus Pro, there's... I'm, I'm wondering, where are the return kills? Right. You know, where one person goes out, dies, they have another person follow, and able to get the 1v1 trade, because terrorists benefit more with the 1v1 trade than the CTs will. Um, I'm wondering what's going on with those, and, and we'll see a little bit more in this round, as TSM now take a three-round lead up 7-4 in the first half. The buy-up coming back in. Again, we still yet to see an op come out of Virtus Pro. And we're going to see Cajun B back on the AWP. It does sound nice, doesn't it? Either way, uh, we did actually see, you know, of course, in round eight that VP boys picked up that one round after the D3 from the pistol. And then straight after that, they got money screwed as TSM picked that one up. So, 7 4 the scoreline. Virtus Pro do have a good handful of nades. Not really ideal. They do just oh, have that one volley on Taz. He's gone aggressive, and this time it pays off. Carragher this. Pretty solid defense on the long is finally starting well, to fall down. That's a and big kill push because Kerrigan now down. KGB has no backup from long A, no protection from the back step. Y'all can push in, but KGB just going with his chances, picks up one kill, does eventually fall. And Virtus Pro, they're going to get the bomb down. And that kill by Viali was so impactful on the Kerrigan device. <gasps> he can't get the spray in. Now it's Dupree in a one on four. As the bomb goes down, his money suggests he could he could do pretty well here. Take the risk, take some weapons out of the VP boys, oh. but Neo <laughs> says no. As we are going to see the AWP recovered as well. And that, that, I think, is that the first AWP? Hang on. Yep, we're going to see the first AWP. Is that the first AWP for Basha? Able God. to uh, salvage it. <laughs> but again, I just want to point out, like, Kerrigan's been holding long A. You have Cajun B kind of holding the, the roadway there. And then you have Zitnik sitting back towards CT or towards site. And when Kerrigan falls, Cajun B is by himself with an AWP force to look in two different directions. And when you do that, Viali gets some free damage, some free pressure from the from the backside of him. And it forces Cajun B to make mistakes. And that's why that kill was so damn big out of Virtus Pro. And then that's himself another round, but we're going to find out how Pasha is going to work with Asop. He's still watching down middle. 
Maybe waiting for Device to re uh, re peek it to challenge. But Snacks, oh, if he doesn't flash or force Device to look away, this is going to be dangerous. Yeah, there we go. Flash coming in, just doing reposition. And Verspro can get some sort of ground going in the middle. Yeah, why is this Empasher in first? He can get that pre aim. He can really lock down the, the uh, all presence from Device. Say that, though. I think he did just get spotted or something. Wef Fire was definitely I exchanged. Like he got shot, but I don't know. But his what? health didn't go down. Snacks <laughs> did get chunked down to one health, so we'll go with that. As he has a non existent health bar at this point, you can just see pure black on that line. And now, with the bomb safely in the hands of Taz, Pasha hunts for an opening pick. 50 seconds on the clock. They've got so much time to work with. And I say so much time with the amount of smokes that VP still, I mean, excuse me, that TSM still have, they really do. Three flashes is about all they have left. That's the last one thrown out towards short. And VP, they managed to bait out a whole lot of nades in the start, the start of this one. But now 30 seconds. Time is starting to become a bit of a problem. There we go. A little bit of a fake towards B. And Neo going to push straight through towards CT spawn. I'm not sure Zitmix is going to spot him out. In the meantime, the push towards Cat's going to be happening as well. And they're slowly going to make their way through. 20 seconds to go. Bialy picks the first kill. Neo able to secure the kill on a Zitmix. And Kerrigan will be the last man towards A to defend this from actually long. But I'm not sure if he's going to be able to pick up too much. He's going to get challenged out. There's so many people on site. He didn't even know they were there. And Bialy picks up the kill. And now the pre device most likely going to be forced to save. Now, and you can VP. see British Pro's plan. Like, yeah. Pasha was the one to go up middle, by himself, not by himself, but first look for the peaks. Then he was the only man on Coward to push out. Like, they're really dependent on Pasha to hit these shots to open up a site. And that's the first time we've seen that strategy executed successfully from VP, and that's the first time we've seen an AWP. That is probably mm -hmm. a bit of a positive correlation yeah, we yeah. can draw there. And the VP's attack does really rely heavily on those opening picks from Pasha. And not necessarily opening picks, but the, the intel he can gather as well with the uh, positions that they put him in. We're going to be seeing the sixth round on the board for Verse Pro. I have to say that TSM, when t when VP do get their successful pushes, have no idea. Like we saw just then, Carrigan was completely caught off guard. Three T's, but on a site yeah. before he realized. Like that's a statement that TSM, when VP do it correctly, aren't quite ready for. I it. mean, it was a, it was a bold strategy because I think he was trying to get in towards uh, in towards ramp behind the box before right. they saw him coming to get like a really nice angle, pick up a couple of kills. Um, but unfortunately, it, didn't, it just didn't work out. Just kind of timing got the best of him. And unfortunately, Pasha not able to hit the cross. But we're just going back to playing passive. Back to, uh, like you pointed out in the last round, forcing TSM to use all their smokes, use all their flashes, so they can hit these sites with not much resistance. And TSM, they're looking for a push towards B halls, or towards B. And Device will pick up the kill on the Pasha and shut him down so they will have control of uh, upper B if they want to. It's even forcing the Redis Pro to throw some smokes and some Molotovs just to stop any sort of push from coming in. So now they're gonna have to go towards Kawit. They have been spotted out. KGB will be waiting towards Car again with the AWP, or not the AWP this time, is on Device, and he will be dropped. Just three players all looking for you. That's gonna be terrifying for KGB. Carrigan meets a similar fate though, as he's now down and out. And while it is a level playing field, just a 5-7 for Zipnix, as he's gonna be a bit cautious to uh, push up towards Elevator. Yeah, and Device to trade away is up for the AK, trying to go for the retake. It is a three on three, so it is possible. You got a man towards Goose, man towards uh, Ramp, and you got a man towards Long A where Bialy has no resistance, so he can turn around and help out. And Taz gonna go for the challenge, gets one, can't get the second. And now TSM are charged in towards the site. Let's see what he's got. Not much. He's actually gonna be doing free picking up his second. And wow, Bialy has chunked down low. He does oh, have a molly. molly. That's so important. If it lands perfectly, the defuse isn't gonna come in. I think he's got time, and Bialy. Oh, oh no! One second left, the last digit didn't get put in, and Bialy's Molotov saves the day. Woo! Take a big exhale as he secures the round for his team with a strong arm and a flame in a bottle. You have to wonder, like, Bialy, when he's throwing that, how much health does he have? How long would it take to kill him to roast him nice and nice and uh, medium well in time for that? That was, that was like 50% luck, 50% skill. But it was so damn well done by him. I mean, the one-for-one -one trade he was able to get onto the man peeking him uh, from CT, and then just the molly to close things off with, wow. 50% concentrated power of will. <laughs> There's now two free. He's going to be picking the opener. The actual the, the point I was going to make way, way back at the start of the previous round was just how aggressive Device was getting with that AWP. He got the opening pick, but didn't quite bring the round home, as close as it may be. But look at this spy in that fight in this final round. A P90 scraped together from Device. The MP7 and the, even the Armor 5.7 for Zipnix, which is becoming an all too familiar reality for him. And once again, that bomb is setting up for the short push. And I, it, TSM must have cottoned on that this is what's going to be coming in. And here it comes. Neo's going to be throwing out the Molotov this time. And KGB's ready, holding the angle. That's the first connection. And now Zipnik's trying to rattle off the shots with a P57. Doesn't quite connect. 
And here comes the four-man push. Oh, he misses the next two, and Bialy does clean him up. Neo going to secure one for himself as well. Now Dupree and Kerrigan is going to be the last two alive in this two-on-four situation. Snacks on 10 health, Neo on three. But with both of them coming from Catwalk, it's going to be almost an impossible feat. But flash themselves in, trying to turn straight to the smoke. Snacks picks up one, Kerrigan responds, he gets two! And now he's in a one-on-two situation, he does not have a kit. And unfortunately for him, he will Ooh. fall down. But that Bialy Molly. In the, in the 14th round was just insane. If you had a bit of a stronger American accent, that would have been a Bialy Mali. That would have sounded much, <laughs> that would have sounded much better. Either way, I don't know if that's American. I'm I think pretty that's like sure. Southern, Is that Southern. Southern. A nice Southern draw, but well done by Virtus Pro. I mean, considering how inconsistent and how the results haven't been that great in the last year alone. Oh, here it is again. Oh my Brilliant. gosh. Like, the hang on, let's look at the timer. He was like, is that like 44? It goes down so fast. Fast! Oh my God. lord, he's gonna be. I, I mean, that would have been a fist to desk moment. I'd have been a little bit <laughs> upset about that one. Because, I mean, you hear the Molly, and then you see you've got 40 points of health yeah, with like, two seconds this, left. Guys, you're worry. like, right, we're, we're cool. We're, we're good. We're Gucci. And we, we didn't see that one <laughs> get picked up, damn it. <laughs> Um, either way, that does uh, that does wrap up the first half, and the first pro just pipping them at the post, eight to seven. <sighs> It's going to be a real rocky second half. It's going to be interesting to see actually how well, uh, as the side swap, mm -hmm. VP execute their, their CT side. Well, TSM, I feel like they're going to be a little bit stronger on the T side than Versus Pro, where but Versus Pro started off pretty strong with the one for one trade towards long A. And TSM looking to just continue to push oh. it. They have the smoke, they have a nade too, and Cage and B just picking up kills. It's able to actually uh, allow the bomb to get towards site, but Neo just spamming through the smoke, picks up one. Yeah, we missed actually. Snacks got boosted over the smoke in double doors to pick up that open. That was so stylish. And I think that's a nice word to summarize the VP boys. And they are going to be seeing the flash come out. Device vision obscured, but KGB's picking up where he left off. And now 2v2. Health does favor VP, as does Snacks' positioning. What? KGB with just 14 points of health isn't going to get the second. Taz swings around and puts one into his chest to bring the first round home. Defuse and the ninth round now on the board for VP. All right, good start for them. Virtus Pro picking up both pistol rounds in this game so far. Um, I'm actually going to look at the scoreboard to see what they're kind of at. We have Tassin at 12 and 12. We have Neo at 15 and 12. We have Bialy at 15 and 12. And over on the other side for TSM, Device at 16 and 12. Dupree at 13 and 10. Everyone really performing well on the side of TSM. You know, there's only a six kill difference between the top fragger and the bottom fragger. On the side of Virtus Pro, though, a little bit different when you have people at 15 and uh, 6. Snack's not really having the best performance in this game. When he's typically the man you can always depend on. But here we go. TSM buying up. Tech Nines, P250, the Galil. TSM, are they going for the quick push or are they going for the slow push? And it looks like they're going for a little bit slow. Again with the boost, they know what they want to do. And you're right, TSM set up to potentially have a, a bit more of a favorable T side. Not if Taz connects it again. That's twice, two out, two out of two, successful. Oh, here we go, MP9 spray down. Going to be double as he's got the hot rod. That's not going to be enough for the third though, as we are going to see his teammates come to mop up. The PP Bison of Bialy even finding ahead. And that's going to be a big influx of money with those SMG frags. And I'm waiting to see when the first gun round kicks off for TSM, because yeah. I'm assuming, or at least hoping for them, that they win that round. You know, just again, based, based on past results, Virtus Pro played Dust 2 only eight times in 2015, and they've lost the majority of the games with five losses, three wins. You look at TSM, they've played it 25 times with 18 wins and seven losses, beating teams like NIP twice, Dinitas, Envious. Yeah. Like, Virtus, our TSM should have the stronger Dust 2, but, you know, Virtus Pro made this little bit of time that they've had off, you know? Not going to DreamHack has been able to fix some things that they haven't been able to do in the past. Yeah, we saw things get kind of close with Mouse Sports until they kind of switched on on that second half. But I mean, a 10 5 CT half on Cobble suggests that Mouse Sports were, uh, were challenging TSM at one point or another. Still, this game is by no means over. Just 10 7, and we are going to be seeing Pasha try and do what Cajun B did so well. He is going to connect the first. Looking for the second now, we need doesn't hit it as now Snacks has already responded onto Dupree. TSM have managed to push on towards the site, and he knows one of them's low as he's trying to hit the jump shots. And actually, this isn't going too badly for TSM. Oh, oh. <laughs> as I say that, the final three frags do get picked up, but they, they made it relatively that's, costly. That's two bomb plants in a row, too. So TSM going to have a full buy into this round number three. Um, so that's all they really needed to get things going in the round. And I feel like after Dreamhack Tours, you know, that just happened last weekend, everyone saw MBK and his jumping scout shots that they're like, you know what? We can do that. We'll just pick up scouts and buy them a lot more often. And you're seeing how damn strong it is. The jumping scouts, the scouts in general, when you follow it up with a pistol, it can really turn rounds 
well, for lack of a better term, around. Yeah, and you saw that dude who was playing Scout only. It was on the was front page of Reddit, yeah. and he was insane. Yeah. <laughs> All it did was make me want to buy a Scout and run around on Deathmatch, and then I realized I can't do <laughs> And then I realized I'm crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either way, Shot isn't going to miss out, as they do use that need to obscure vision for the cross, and I do see that being done an awful lot. Of course, that enables you to have that extra smoke for the behold or that, that late mid smoke if you desire. Device versus... Actually, I was going to say the AWP of Pasha. Pasha's sticking with the scout, just as we were talking about it. He's going to choose to keep it in his hands, and we'll see what they can do with that, as TSM are going to follow a similar uh, template that VP started with this three-man presence on short. And yeah, TSM actually going to be going for the AWP on device um, to see if he can do anything, see if he can challenge maybe on the Pasha. Um, he's not really in a position to do that so far. He's going to be heading towards Catwalk momentarily. And TSM, it looks like they have the desired area they want to hit. They want to go towards Catwalk. They have the smokes. They have the flashes. Even some Molotovs to force them in bad positions. But let's see how the execute does go. They're actually smoked off yet again. Posture going to be waiting on the side. And I'm assuming this one's going to jump CT spawn. I I'm assuming they want to if they have the smoke for it. But here we go. Pasha doesn't connect. Actually, I think it did connect on a Kerrigan. But they back away. They're giving this up to TSM. They're going for the retake. Uh, we'll see if, <coughs> excuse me, TS, K, uh, KJB can find these openers on towards short. Neo says no, though, as we're going to be seeing that 4v3. Oh, trying to change the, the numbers, trying to level the playing field out. Devices get brought low. It's going to be Orp v Scout if he's not too careful, though. And Pasha, knowing that two of these players are low, and he could favor this one, as we're going to see once again. The Molly get thrown oh, out to sight. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, blood is drawn, and Bialy with the double. And now all onto Carrigan. Three to find, and Bialy picking up another three in that round for this man. And he seems to just thrive from that long side. Molly or not, he picks up frags. I feel like that was one of the slowest retakes in CS history. They, just, they, they sat along with two people just like, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. We got this. We'll we take got our this. time. We'll throw it sooner get it in there just to buy a little bit of time. And then <laughs> just like that, in a matter of a second, three people died yeah. on TSM side. And Verse probably able to go for the retake. And you point out the scout, you know, the scout out of posture last round. Well, now he's got himself an op from the other side. He's got devices. So... Zero cost for him to get that. And look at that economy starting yeah. to build up. I was going to say, in, this is a stark contrast to what TSM's economy looked like on their opening CT rounds. They were winning rounds, mm -hmm. but it was a whole lot more costly than it has been for VP. And so, with that, a lot of money in the bank, this is going to have to be... TSM needs to start rocking this Polish boat. If they want to pick this one up, Pasha is in a prime position to pick up this frag on long. If he chooses to peek it, he does. And Carrigan gets put into the grave as he looks for a second towards that pit area. Nade does chunk him down, though, and the flash is coming in. They're trying to execute, and Dupree has taken the first step in the right direction. Pasha misses a shot, misses two, unfortunately, but he's not going to miss much more than that. And just as I call it, he misses a third. Pasha, come on. His device picks up two snacks now. Stuck at elevator, looking for a little bit of backup, looking for maybe another kill and a two-on-three situation, but KGB waiting then to push to the smoke. He will get flashed up, he's turned completely away, and look at, oh no! Stacks, he can't connect the shots, and now it's all in the hands of Neo. Are you the chosen one? Not gonna be it as Device gets that one, and we're gonna be seeing TSM pick up a round, primarily though because of missed shots from Vertus Pro. That was, yeah, exactly. That was a really sketchy play by TSM. They rushed one man long A, he got taken out by Pasha immediately, and then it was just like a big lull of 10 to 15 seconds of no one. It felt almost miscommunication because that dude was getting very little information. I mean, he could say there's well, an they, AWP well, on where, A. Yeah, they knew where Pasha would be then, yeah. but it's like, well, if he's not long, he's gonna be probably A anyways. Right. Um, yeah, really, really wonky. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, and then you gotta have to run to Pasha, he missed three shots that maybe he should have hit. Most likely he should have been able to hit, which would have stopped TSM in their tracks. So TSM getting a little bit of a little bit of luck, I say, in that round. Snacks doing exactly what he's done again. Him and Taz seem to favor this boost, and it's picked up two frags uh, and the twice two times they've done it. That was hard to say. Either way, though, this stack does once again succeed. TSM need to learn their lesson and learn it fast as we're gonna be seeing Carrigan taken down early. Aggressive push from Pasha does take damage, but oh, oh sorry, do damage. Oh, that's a shot. Just see the pixel of Cajun B's head, and he's gonna take him down with it. Got another one low, and that Molly may be enough to take Dupree out down and out of this one. If not, it could have been Neo, but not today. So low health Dupree. Zip mix a bit worse for wear as well. And the four CTs are starting to adopt some pretty aggressive holds. And Pasha just got a ridiculous amount of damage done with the Dinks, uh, even being blind in middle. Um, and the Molotov forcing, forcing to pre uh, back in towards upper tunnel where he's able to take out Neo, uh, where Neo should have been able to win on that 1v1. But either way, four on three, TSM not on a lot of health. And Pasha still lurking in mid. On Catwalk, he could peek around, get uh, Zipmix down. He will pick up the kill, looking down towards lower. As oh, does get the trade, now a two on three, and Taz. Looking for him able to pick up the kill towards the B site. So VP closed out the round. And now, after losing one, they pick up another because of the stable economy that they've gotten, because of picking up the op in that in the last round before, able to save that proportion, I'll have to spend it himself. And now they're up 13-8.
Taz, Bialy, and Neo. Top of the scoreboard and looking really fierce. It has to be said. TSM, they have their eight rounds, but this is a very convincing CT side from the Virtus Pro boys. They managed to manage screw TSM, though, with that victory. Of course, TSM picked up the round prior. And with that, their Monday economy is going to be even more so. I love that stack. It's great, isn't it? And then this, you, let's be honest, three out of three times they picked up a frag. And you have Taz looking away. So if a flash comes in, he can just sweep around and, and Snacks can just turn around. So it's like a, it's like, it's a little pivoting turret uh, for them. But Pasha able to push out, able to get one kill. And get dropped a very long health and just back away. Not trying to lose on any guns and Snacks. Again! <laughs> I mean, TSM, like, there's got to be some point where you, you stop running into these bullets as Taz able to secure one for himself. <laughs> It's just a pillar, a pillar of bullets that they just seem to walk into. Uh, these guys are going to pick up a few of this, uh, I think it's just purely P250s. TSM, man. Zipnix knows his time is now. He's down as well, and just two rounds away from victory. Virtus Pro looking incredible. I don't know how sincere Pasha was being, saying, I'm just going to play Dust 2 today, but he's certainly looking strong, as is his team. Well, Virtus Pro have been playing a little... Uh Versatile yeah. uh, with their long A because you know we saw TSM they sent three people constantly over towards long to get that early control then back away but in the last two rounds alone Virtus Pro or last three rounds they completely left long A alone they had people play on site instead in catwalk to apply more pressure there they're boosting people back on cat yet again and they're really giving up that long A control where TSM looks like they've now caught on to it and have pushed out two men there. Oh, Sipnix missed a very unfavorable trade there he had the two heads of CTs they weren't looking at him Bialy a bit too quick on that spin. That's once again, Taz, if he's not boosting at doors, he's boosting at elevators. He's going to be making a push towards the smoke. He's actually going to be caught out. Oh. He gets a double. That's going to be beautiful as Device and Carrigan are going to be put to sleep permanently. And now Snacks brought low. He is going to be able to... Oh, sorry, I say that. He was, I was going to think he was going to be able to get out of that one. But Dupree shuts him down. And now all onto that very man I just mentioned for CTs to find. And that's going to be the 15th. Virtus Pro. Dust2 is looking really, really strong, and it has to be said that no money. TSM are just have been poor for the last two rounds. Yeah, they have no money to spend. They're going to be able to pick up just a couple of pistols and some armor, and even a Galil for Dupree. Uh, I, TSM, it looks like they just haven't come to play. Again, they have the better stats on paper. They're the better team on this map. But Virtus Pro, again, I have to point out just maybe how important that week or two weeks it's been for them since their last event to... Just go over what's been wrong the past few weeks. Like, you know, everyone's been mentioning time and time again that they're in every tournament, and because of that, they can't fix problems that they have. But now it seems like they have been able to, and they're looking damn good. Yeah, and this boost again. I feel, I feel like Snacks has been spending the majority of his CT side on top of Taz's head. Flash comes in and both manage to avoid it, and so TSM with this very, very shoddy buy. Two Tech Nines, the B250, and that double Galil. Going to be uh, hungering for something. I don't know how much they'll be able to find. You see Dupree holding long as passively as he can. He has managed to push up relatively well. and he can, It kind of gives him some intel that the CTs aren't particularly paying too much attention to that long side. And I think he may be suggesting to his team that they bring the bomb out as well. Let's see, they do have one smoke to actually, yeah, one smoke to work with to actually go over there. But Pasha able to pick the first kill towards Kawa. Cage be able to respawn, and Zipmix it's this time to push through. They do have, I believe, the smoke to help uh, shut that one down. But Cage be able to pick up another kill. Zipmix as well, and wow. TSM on pff, a really shoddy buy will be able to pick up their ninth round unless Neo can go huge in a one on four. I think he's uh, realizing his odds of this one, but TSM on the brink of defeat. Managing to pull something together. They do manage to grab the weapons out of the cold dead hands of Virtus Pro, and they're just going to be happy to put another round on the board and delay the potentially kind of demoralizing result of 16-8. Uh, TSM, they have to be careful. They need to save, save their guns. They need to not lose them. They need to build up some sort of economy. And again, even though they can't really well, buy up if they lose because the game's over, they still need to build a buy-up ops if they, if they want to um, to kind of challenge Pasha if he does go for it. Yep, and that's going to come to a close. Zipnix and KJMB picking up a double apiece. And we are going to be seeing Neo just manage to recover Taz's AWP and try and keep that one safe for the next round. Now, oh, I'm I sniper think, and uh, I was about to suggest, are we going to see Pasha pick it up again? And we do. We saw him do uh, decent things. I'm not going to say amazing things with it because uh, it's very rare you see amazing things with the auto sniper. But he has picked it up, and we saw him do stuff with it on train. Let's see if he can do it here on D2. I'm just going to be heading towards long, looking for the challenge. They, I mean, first of all, haven't been challenging long at all, and now they're going to get some free kills, but Pasha gets, or gets completely blind up. Kerrigan able to get the response onto him. Be on it quick to return. And that's very just changing things up, realizing, yeah, we give long A away every round. Why not challenge it this time? And they do get a one-for-one -one trade, which isn't really too favorable for him. 
But Stocks is getting so much information in the middle. He can hear them moving. You can see the nades coming out. And if oh. only Device would just spray. If only he could just know. It's almost like he's not wall hacking. Almost. That's the flash. That's actually going to completely catch Snacks. No, just half partially. He's going to enable him to reposition, though, and Device is so aware there's someone around. It's going to be a one for one duel. Oh, Device does that manage to come out Neo. on top. Oh, oh that's double. such a connection. That's the second double, two days running. And now. Remember, let's not forget it was KGB who picked it up before. That's a third! Zipnix goes down and it's all on to Device. And it looks like Neo has managed to bring that 16th round home for his team. Device, two to find and 12 points of health to work with. 38 seconds to go. The smoke will come in, but he doesn't expect Taz off to the side. And that's going to close it out. 16-9. Virtus Pro picking up the victory.